Amen. Thank you. Right in the corner where you are. Turn to, turn to James chapter 4 tonight, verses 13 to 17. I'm speaking on the subject, the good Lord willing, or the good Lord a willing. Uh, we used to have a wonderful lady that was in our church. Some, some of you may remember Jean and Linda Kane. Um, Jean's mother was in our church for many, many years. Her name was, was Floy. She's from Texas. Don't ask me where she got the name Floy. She didn't like the name, and she, but she was, she was one of, just a very, very godly lady, very much an encouraging lady, and any time I would say to her something, she would always look at me and she would always say, I'd say, I'll see you tonight, she goes, the good Lord are willing, the good Lord are willing. That was always her answer. And in James chapter 4, verses 13 to 17, <clears throat> I believe that uh, James gives us some verses which allude to that philosophy. It's a good, that's a good philosophy to have every day. The good Lord are willing. Um, in verse, beginning in verse 13, it says, Go to now, ye that say, tomorrow, or I mean, sorry, today, or tomorrow we will go into such a city and continue there a year and buy and sell and get gain, whereas ye know not what shall be on the morrow. Number one, the first thing tonight in relation to the message, <clears throat> the good Lord are willing, just as a matter of intro, we must be conscious of our propensity to make plans without consulting the Lord. Let me say that again. We must be conscious of our propensity to make plans without consulting the Lord. Um, the songwriter, great song, Come Thou Fount, and one of the phrases says, prone to wander, Lord, I feel it. Prone to leave the God I love. Here's my heart, O take and seal it, seal it for thy courts above. And so <clears throat> everything we do should be purposed of the Lord. Now we know because we're, we're flesh, we know that not everything that we do every day is purposed of the Lord. Um, your conflicts that you have, that you create, are not purpose of the Lord. Uh, your sinful things that you do in your life are not purpose of the Lord. And even plans that we make are not necessarily purpose of the Lord. So no, the first principle tonight in this passage is remember tomorrow may be different than you planned. Remember, tomorrow may be different than you planned. How many times have you set off in a day or you look forward in anticipation <clears throat> to a day or to an event only for that exciting plan to be dashed in a moment? You just don't know. And so we, we have to live <coughs> each day with the understanding that what we plan, and there's nothing wrong with planning, but what we plan may never happen. And we trust God for that. That He allows that. Uh, we can thank God that a lot of the things that we do plan don't happen. Amen. And so <clears throat> he, he writes in verse 14, he says, Whereas ye know not what shall be on the morrow. I, I forgot this morning to, um, to ask folks to pray for Glenn Stockstill. Uh, Glenn was a little discouraged this morning. He... He had plans. He had every, everything set this week. Uh, Carl, he was going to come and he was going to be uh, get a haircut. And he'll probably hear this tonight, but I'm preaching it um, both to be an encouragement to people online and people here. And things just didn't happen like he wanted to, and he's not feeling well, and he had, he had some dizziness, which is similar to a, something that he had years ago. And... I was all ready to pick him up, and he called me, and he said, Pastor, don't come. I really want to be there. And I, and I said to him this morning, I said, Glenn, 
God never holds you accountable for things that are outside of your control. He knows what is going on. And so just trust him and don't feel guilty. I know you want to be here, but just trust the Lord with it. One day you'll be here. And so <clears throat> understand, number one, that tomorrow may be much different than you planned. Number two, remember the brevity of life. I was reminded again this, this weekend on Friday of how short life is. He says, for what is your life? It is even a vapor. And note what he says in verse 14 at the end of the verse. He says, for what is your life? It is even a vapor. Now, we know what a vapor is. How, how quickly does a vapor leave when you ladies are boiling water? It's just... Psh. And we honestly, as human beings, we really don't relate to that in our own life because we all think we're going to live forever. We live that way. We get up and we just, we, we think, well, you know, it's going to happen to somebody else. It's not going to happen to me. And the fact is, is all of our lives in the grand scheme of eternity and on God's timeline are very, very short. Verse 14, he says, For what is your life? It is even a vapor that appeareth for a little time and then vanisheth away. God's not minimizing a life. He's just saying life is short. And so that's why we need to live life to the fullest and make every moment count for the Lord. So remember the brevity of life. Uh, Friday, I ministered to a, a lady, uh, or actually ministered to her family. It was a lady that I had ministered to in um, one of the assisted living places I, I have gone to for about 13 years. She had been there with her husband, and, I, and I'd forgotten um, until reminded by her daughter that her husband had actually, I'd actually pastored him there. They were both there and she was at that time very active but he had slowed down and so uh, had been a mortician in the last 10 years he had been uh, working in Hillsborough Oregon at a place and and when he passed he was buried there and so <clears throat> I got a call um, a little over a week ago from his daughter and just asked me if I would go see her and and just encourage her she knew she was slowing down. She was struggling with her mind a little. And she was also, as many seniors do, was dealing with fear. And so <clears throat> I read several verses and, and, and tried to encourage her heart. And we talked about the unknown and we talked about what, um, what the future might hold and that we just have to trust the Lord and take one day at a time. And, and two days from that conversation, she was gone. It really caught me off guard because I was, I looked at her and I, and I, I thought, well, you know, she's, she's slowing down and, and uh, you know, maybe a few months down the road or, you know, and I told, I looked to her daughter and, I, and she, 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 was, she was starting to, to get to the place where so, so many times during the conversation she would just go like this and then she'd wake up and then we'd talk some more and she'd go like this and she'd wake up again and... And so in between her waking up, I, I just said to Charlotte as I was leaving, I said, when the time comes and she, she does pass, I said, then please, um, you know, give me a call. And so <clears throat> I came into the office Monday of last week, and or actually it was Tuesday of last week. I, I didn't, I think she actually called Monday, and, and I, I saw a number that I didn't recognize on the church phone. And so I call, I, I, I dialed the number for our voicemail and, and it said, this is Charlotte, my mom passed. And I thought, what? I can't, I can't believe it. And so I called her and we talked and, and she said, if you can, 
She said my mother was very specific and she and on that day that I saw her, she, she again reiterated, she says, I want you to be part of my service. So, but it was on a Friday and I drive. And then Saturday, my wife's aunt was 75, and so we, we were planning, we had been planning for months a surprise party for her, and so there was no way I could do Friday, which was a memorial. And <clears throat> um, she said, now, Friday, she said, if you could work it out, she said, we would, we would love to have you to come down. And come to find out, they didn't have anybody for Friday. Uh, her husband believed in taking care of the body first, and then having the memorial afterwards and leaving on a high note. And so I called my, my uh, office um, for transportation and I explained the nature of why I was wanting to be off. And normally it's, it's, it's very, very difficult from the district to get off uh, because they've, they've got a schedule to keep. And uh, our, our main boss, as soon as he heard said he said just fill out the paperwork and he said just he said I'll, I'll sign off immediately on it and when I got to got in that afternoon I looked at my, my box everything was all approved everything was all set so I just put that in my glove box and and uh, we were able to go on Friday but I would never have thought Ruth would be gone um, but she's gone and so <clears throat> first remember tomorrow may be much different than you plan. Number two, remember the brevity of life. Number three, remember our times are in His hands. Verse 15, James writes, For that ye ought to say, If the Lord will, we shall live and do this or that. That's God's choice. God makes those plans. He's the one who determines when and where is our time. The Bible says it's appointed unto man once to die, and after this, the judgment. In another place of Scripture, the Bible does say our times are in His hands. And so, <clears throat> always remember who controls your life. He authored your life. He says, I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. And so as we, we consider that, we need to understand that as we are living our life, that we should always say, the good Lord are willing. If the Lord wills, I'll see you tomorrow. If the Lord wills, I'll be at work. If the Lord wills, I'll be over. If the Lord wills, we'll do this, we'll do that. It's only God that really truly knows and controls our time. The next thing, remember not to boast of your plans. Is very specific in verse 16. He says, But now ye rejoice in your boastings. All such rejoicing is evil. We're also confident sometimes, aren't we? And we, we're very emphatic in making statements and what we're going to do and all these goals and all these plans. And, and as I said, there's nothing wrong with planning. But oh, how we need to keep it in perspective. Because boasting, thinking you have control. Uh, note, note the first verse, verse 13. Go to now ye that say, tomorrow, or today or tomorrow, we will go into such a city. Well, you don't know that. You may not wake up tomorrow. You, you, you don't know that. You may not be physically able to do that. And so the good Lord willing. Always keep that before you. He says, all such boastings, all such rejoicing 
is evil. You say, well, why is that so evil? Because you are making statements that you don't know what you're talking about. And you are being presumptuous that God is allowing you to do what you think you're going to do. We don't tell God what to do. But so many people do. People pray and they bring their plans to God and say, God, this is what I want you to do. This is what I want to do. But they're not coming to him asking his permission and asking him in faith. They are telling him and asking him to put his blessing on what they've already planned. That's not prayer. And that's not faith. That's negotiation. And I'm sorry, but you will not find negotiation as being something uh, that we are to do with God. We are to trust Him with His will for our lives. And that brings us to the final point. Verse 17 says, Therefore to him that knoweth to do good, and doeth it not, to him it is sin. The good Lord are willing, as we live our daily life, we need to be very conscious what we are doing, that it's right, that it's good. Because nothing that God allows for us to do and that he plans for us to do, he purposes for us to do, is ever evil. Let me say that again. Nothing that God ever purposes for us to do is ever evil. Well, the Lord doesn't care about that. Oh? Since when does the Lord not care about everything? Everything that we do as a child of God. God is very acutely aware of everything that His children do. Everywhere they go, everything that they see, everything that they say, Every, every place, every person, all of it, God is conscious of it, but we are not so conscious. And so we, we justify all kinds of things, and we, we just do it. We're not saying the good Lord are willing, we just do it. And we ignore sometimes the voice of the Holy Spirit which says, uh-uh. You know, I don't really think that's good. And we just kind of block it out. Can't block it out. Not if we're living with the philosophy the good Lord are willing. Don't justify evil. I've given this quote. I don't even remember. I don't know who, wrote, who, who made the quote. But I want, you, I want you to write this down. This is a good thing in relation to remember to do what's right. It is never right to do wrong to do right. It is never right to do wrong to do right. God is not the author of of evil. He tempteth no man. Evil comes from the evil one. And so if you are doing something that is evil, you are not in God's will for your life. And you never will be in God's will for your life. <coughs> evil is just that. 
it is evil. And so we need to be conscious every day. When we get up, God, what are your plans for me today? What do you want for me today? And it might be good when we get up to say, Lord, thank you for another day. Thank you that I woke up. You don't have to watch, you don't have to open up the obituary column to see if you're there. If you're alive, you just thank God. And so as you, as you start the day, don't have all of the, the, I mean, you can't help what your employer has planned. But your own plans, just make sure it's faith. We walk by faith, not by sight. So, our lives are not always going to be by a, by a day timer. You understand what I'm saying? You follow what I'm saying? Now, I'm not saying be disorganized. I'm not saying live disorderly. I'm not saying live, not, don't live structured. But I, I am saying this, this evening, don't run roughshod over the Holy Spirit in your life. Because if we are living according to His will, then we are allowing Him to lead our lives and to control our lives. And the more that we give our lives over to the Holy Spirit, the less control we have. Jerry Falwell spoke of the, the filling of the Holy Spirit. And he spoke of, of times where he felt God very much upon his life and very overwhelmed, uh, very similar to what D.L. Moody said, how he moved, had to go to a room and had to be beside him, be, by himself because he felt almost as though he was going to die if God had, had not just given him space. But Jerry Fowler will explain the power of the Holy Spirit as, as this. He said it is the, the, the power of the Holy Spirit or the control of the Holy Spirit is not how much of the Holy Spirit you have, but how much the Holy Spirit has of you. And that's what the filling of the Holy Spirit is about. That's what the baptism of the Holy Spirit is about. It is God controlling you, not you controlling God. So, be okay with God changing how you decided to start your day or in faith what you started to make your day and allow Him to make the changes in the pathway to keep you on the straight and narrow. It's okay. It is okay not to get everything done that you had planned as long as everything that you got done was what he planned. Seriously. You know, some, some, some people live really, really, really structured and rigid and they have to check everything off or they flip out. What happens if you don't check anything off on a day? Yeah. If, if you are living for the Lord, He may totally change your plans. Did you know that um, Philip did not plan to talk to the Ethiopian eunuch? But God did. And God had him in the right place at the right time. And he said, join yourself to that man in that chariot. So he did. And he 
when he got up in the chariot, he says, Understandest thou what thou readest? He had the scriptures open. And he said, How can I except some man should guide me? Well, it's really interesting that you decided to come up in the chariot. And he preached unto him Jesus. But what the end of the story is, is that that was just a little part of his day. He shared the gospel. He won the man to Christ. He baptized him. And then the Bible says he vanished out of his sight. Now we don't know the rest of the story. Because we don't know where he appeared next. See, that's how my mind works. I have a, I have a wild imagination. And I imagine that God, wherever he had him go from there, had him go to a place that, again, he had not planned to go, and that it involved sharing Jesus with someone else. You think? Probably. So live your life by faith and be okay if God decides to make other plans. Faith makes plans based upon what you, we understand with Scripture, with the parenthesis, the good Lord a willing, at the end of each time slot of those plans. So maybe your 10 o'clock doesn't happen because maybe you have some other engagement God decides to plug into that slot and so you have to put those people off or maybe you never do what you had planned. It's okay. The world won't come to an end. Life will continue provided the good Lord willing. Just trust Him. Just trust Him. So let's read the passage one last time and then we'll go. Go to now ye that say, tomorrow or to, today or tomorrow, we will go into such a city and continue there. Look at this. A year. How do you know that? How would you even think of being able to know that? But people do. And buy and sell and get gain. All of these grandiose plans. A year? Really? Hey, let's just put it down where you can wrap your mind around it. Just think of the weathermen. What a, what a stupid job. What, what a... What a I mean, a, a, seriously. The weak... The f weak forecast. Really? How many times has a weak forecast ever happened? Zero. It's all speculation. It's, it's all, quite frankly, prevarication. <laughs> because they don't know moment by moment, especially in Seattle, they don't know what can happen with the winds and they don't control the weather. I, I, love, I, I just love it when a weatherman says, we're going to give you sunshine tomorrow. Oh, <laughs> oh you are? Okay. Yeah. Or we're going to give you rain tomorrow. Um, really? Well, in, in Seattle, that's not surprising. Okay. But all of life is that way. It's not, it's not just the meteorologists or weathermen or whatever you want to call them. It's all that have the arrogance to make long plans without saying the good Lord are willing. Let's stand. Our heads are bowed. Our eyes are closed.